Kilo Sierra, departing 3 1, South Departure Falcon. What's up here at Oshkosh 2022, here with the badass Bayo, who is going to show us around the F-35A. She's going to fly the demo here at Oshkosh in some heritage flight, which is pretty cool. I got to sneak in when you arrived here in the back of a Mustang, which was pretty <laughs> epic, I'm going to say the least. What do you think about arriving at Oshkosh? Uh, it was awesome. I mean, definitely recommend showing up during the Airboss window in the TFR, because I don't think I would have made it any other way. I, so when I came in in 2018, that was the deal. I arrived on the wing of a Mustang because it's so scary when you see like the ADSB <laughs> yeah. and just all these planes flying around. So, pro tip: yeah. arrive like yeah. I on would the never wing. have survived. Yeah, no, 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 unable. It's too scary. Uh, so cool that you're here and you're here all week flying. But I wanted to kind of walk around the F-35 if we can do that before we jump into that. Just real quick, you started off flying fifth gen your entire career. So F-22 to the F-35. Quick differences, what do you think between the F-22 and F-35? Yeah, um, they're actually very, very similar tactically, and uh, so how we employ the airplanes, the sensors, all that sort of capability. Um, Raptor optimized for air to air, F-35 more optimized for air to ground, but they can both do some of the similar missions. So um, that's pretty cool that we'll both be out there night one uh, doing the yeah. fifth gen mission. Yeah, it's awesome the fact that you've flown both, because there's only a handful of people that can say that, so it's pretty cool. Now. I will give you grief because you've never had a mech scan radar. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to really, I'm, I'm a really bad pilot. <laughs> yeah, I never had to actually work for anything, it, but yeah. yeah, no, it's awesome. So you mind kind of walking us around just a little bit and kind sure. of show and tell? What is this thing hanging out up front underneath here? Oh, this guy. Uh, so this is our EOTS or our T flare, so our targeting uh, infrared system. So there's an IR camera in here that can see basically heat signature differences. Uh, we use that to generate coordinates for our laser guided bombs or our GPS guided bombs. Um, and then it also does have a laser component so we can guide uh, those uh, LGBs in. So you have a funky looking helmet that you're wearing. Is there anything on the jet that allows you to kind of see what's going on in and around you? Can you talk me through that? Yeah, sure. Uh, most popular question, actually. Yeah, uh, so we've got six of these uh, around the airplane. There's also a different wavelength of IR camera in there, uh, primarily used for missile warning, but it does have a 360 degree video around the airplane. And we can put that video onto our visor um, to be able to, you can see through the plane, see through your body. Um, but honestly, that video we actually use as night vision primarily. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because no night vision goggles like you'd find in the Raptor F-20 or in the F-16, F like traditional fighters. Right. That's actually coming from the sensors around the jet. Yeah, we have a night vision camera in the um, helmet that works similar to MVGs, same yeah. technology, but this IR uh, video is actually better fidelity, so we use that. Really? Mm -hmm. That is interesting, because for those who don't know, like, I mean, when you're looking at MVGs, you're looking through the soda straw, and you have to whip your head around back and forth, and you don't get depth perception, you don't really have a great field of view. I mean, you have a terrible field of view. <laughs> uh, but how is it, comparatively speaking, like having that SA-wise, does it really yeah, help? Yeah, it's still all a shade of green. I mean, you're seeing you know, the <laughs> IR stuff. Um, fidelity is, eh, you know, it's yeah. like, like flying around at night. Uh, it's not the best. But. Yeah, it doesn't turn night into day? No, no, yeah. no. Well, that, I mean, it's cool because there's a lot of like awesome features on the F-35 that we can't talk about. But some of these pieces are really neat to know, I think, for people to like know, hey, there's some amazing technology. Speaking of which, I know we mentioned the helmet. Like, how much does the helmet cost? Uh, around $400,000. It's an expensive, uh, it's an it expensive. It is expensive, yeah. So the capability that that gives you, can you talk to me, like, what what it, what makes that unique and what's different? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I came from the Raptor, which had no, no helmet pretty much. Yeah, uh, you're a speed, no off speed, yeah, speed yeah. lid. And so coming from that to basically, you know, an upgraded Jahimix where you've got the F-35 helmet on, um, it's awesome having the off bore side. I mean, I can be looking back here, see AOA, uh, my altitude, uh, airspeed, um, but primarily the situational awareness it gives you with the tactical environment. So look around and see symbology over everything you have in your shoot list, your wingman, um, just to gather that SA that you didn't have uh, without that, in the, uh, for example, the Raptor. So I had talked to Dojo, who is a Strike Eagle pilot and obviously the predecessor for you. You're coming from fifth gen to fifth gen. Dojo was explaining, he came from the Strike Eagle, but he was saying that a wingman coming out of the B course in F-35, he said he would equate that to like a four ship flight lead as far as like the situational awareness they have running the air picture and things like that. Do you think that's a true statement? Yeah, absolutely. And we have to train them to that capability because we fly, you know, in fifth gen formations, which can be 60 miles wide uh, away from each other. So to be able to trust that wingman that's 15, 20 miles 
out there to do their own thing and kind of think like a thinking wingman versus right. being in that visual formation. Um, it's crucial and we've got guys coming straight out of pilot training the F-35 and six months later they're a flight lead on their way to instructors. So like, it's, it's a lot for them to, to handle, but right. um, yeah, I think it's growing up in a video game world helps <laughs> helps a lot. That is true. The, I always, the joke I always make, like, you know, F-16, it's like the Nokia, like the brick phone, and then now the stuff you're jumping into, it's the iPhone. The, the technology is just yeah. so vastly different. Absolutely. Which is what we need as we march into, like, the next fight. Yeah. Can we walk around just a little sure. bit? Oh, I see, I, actually, this is non-tactical questions, <laughs> but obviously we have the ladder uh, to get in and out, which, I don't think do we have any other fighter that has its built own built-in uh, other than the, the Hornets. The Hornets do. Um, well, that's it. Yeah, that's got to be a it's navy. It's pretty convenient. It, it, do you like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is the only thing I saw like the travel pods down there. Yeah. Do you fly with travel pods on the jet? I do every cross country. Yeah. Okay. So we pack actually all of our swag goes in those. Uh, my duffel bags, you know. I don't think Dojo flew with travel from... pods. Maybe oh, I missed really? it. Yeah. Not during the show. Right, yeah, obviously not during like, the yeah, show. Yeah, 5G that, limited. That thing's yeah. gone. So yeah, cross country. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I did not know that, so that's cool. Yeah. I would like to kind of walk back, talk about the motor, talk some yeah. engine stuff. Bird's got it, I see, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Play they, they tagged this one real good. So I've flown in formation in the slot underneath the F-35, <laughs> and like the rumble in the jet, like the F-16 is shaking back there. Yeah. This is a big old motor. Can you tell me a little it's bit about big. this? Yeah, uh, so the F-135 Pratt & Whitney engine, um, 43,000 pounds of thrust and afterburner, um, which, I mean, you talk to the P-51 guys when you fly with them, and they're yeah. like, it is loud uh, yeah. when you start to push that engine up. So uh, we don't have thrust vectoring like the Raptor, um, but super uh, capable engine. We don't do the, the hover mode, obviously, so this no is the A model that. variant. Yeah. Why would you need yeah, to do that? Yeah, too scary. Yeah. So, and you mentioned like flying with a Mustang. So you're doing a lot of different flying, doing demos, but you're flying a jet that likes to go fast yeah, yeah. with planes that can't go as fast. Yeah. What are your thoughts, like heritage, what are some of the challenges when you mix up a P-51, an F-86, an F-35, and a, God forbid an A-1 Sky Raider, which I know you're gonna fly <laughs> yeah. with today. That was a little rough last night. Yeah, gosh, that um, thing is so slow. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's different, like you said. We train every year with them to kind of get used to the differences. Every heritage pilot flies their profile differently too, whether they use more altitude, fly tighter turns. So uh, you're flying at 15 AOA, which makes the flight controls more sluggish. Um, but it's tough, it's a challenge, which is the fun part of it. I, to me, it was like my favorite part of yeah. doing it. Like, it's pretty cool when you're flying on the wing of a 70-year-old warbird. But there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that too, because you have an ejection seat, yeah. they don't, so you yep. better not suck when it they comes. They tell you day one, don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. It's the scariest thing, but also it's like the most awesome yeah. thing. You get, you get used to doing it, but it's still like the coolest thing to watch flying around. Yeah. I will also say flying with the Sky Raider, like that was super painful. I know Stuart <laughs> loves flying that thing, but. It's super but, smooth, which is good. Yeah, um, is your jet yelling at you? Like it was yelling at me in the Viper when Yeah, I we was... get the gear warning horn constantly. Uh, so it doesn't like being that low and that slow without the gear down. So I do, I, I've talked to a couple like Viper guys who transitioned to this. So doing SFOs, the simulated flame out patterns in the Viper, if your engine fails, you gotta be able to do it. To say now, like, it's completely different than what we did in the Viper, where you might do a straight in four or do an SFO four, because once this thing gets going fast, like, it doesn't want to stop. Yeah, I mean, you, you saw the rejoin last night, a uh, little sporty, um, and then there's no uh, dedicated speed brake in it. So if you put the speed brakes out, it's using the flight controls and deflecting those to try to slow you down. Yeah. Um, but if you're flying the airplane, it's going to prioritize the flying over the speed brakes. Um, so it's a little bit tough, and she doesn't slow down. So how do you, like, so the rejoin you did last night, the way I would do that rejoin is I'm obviously jing my face off, but then like a full boot of rudder, which is probably like a, <laughs> there's probably some design limit that I was exceeding there. Nah, I doubt it. But no, like the full boot of rudder, but it's allowing me to make that rudder input to put our barn door out to yeah. slow down. But in the F-35, if you do that, it's going to say probably. Yeah, there's doing? so many control laws with the fly-by-wire system in this airplane um, and the Raptor that you get different things based on what regime of flight you're in, right. what AOA, what airspeed. So I can ask for, you know, max left roll or full boot of right rudder. And sometimes I'm getting yaw, sometimes I'm getting side slip. Um, it's all based on that regime and what the, how the airplane deflects the flight controls is totally different uh, depending on how you're flying the airplane and, and where you are uh, in the world. So like okay. altitude wise. Yeah, it's Com weird. Comparing that to like the Raptor, like it's got to be somewhat similar, but they are very similar. Yeah, they both get into like pitch rate versus nose rate command. Um, you know, different things once you get into post stall regime. What you're asking for, y'all side slip with the pedals. Okay, I'm also digging like so. 
obviously you fought Raptors. I fought Raptors. It was a different story as I was just watching, like, trying yeah. my best. Have you fought Raptors in this, doing BFM? I, I did fight Cabo. Uh, did not go well. Yeah. Uh, so we, yeah. yeah, we were up in, uh, flying out of Selfridge in the London Air Show, and the four of us, the four demo pilots, went up into Omoa and fought each other. Four ship dissimilar. It was pretty fun. That's epic. What, yeah. like, what are your thoughts between, you know, flying the Raptor and flying this? Um, the biggest difference, thrust vectoring is a big deal. And being yeah. a Raptor baby, um, I didn't really notice that until I came to this airplane and then you high AOA, post stall maneuvering, very maneuverable, uh, but thrust vectoring is a game changer. Because when you're doing the thrust vectoring in the Raptor, I mean, it's whatever you want to do, it's doing it. There's obviously nothing you're having to command yeah. to move the nozzles, right? Yeah. It, yeah, so it does it automatically in certain regimes of flight, um, slow speed, but when you're pulling on the stick and you can just have nose authority to do whatever you want almost and just hang the airplane up, it's it's so different versus, you know, fourth gen or this airplane, it's just sinking. Yeah. It's just different. So. It's, it is a sinking feeling <laughs> when you're fighting a Raptor, just like doing your best, looking over your shoulder, but like yeah. that's what you want. And they can just point their nose at you all day long. So. Some guys have it, some guys don't. <laughs> like, it would be nice. Any other like big highlights? Obviously, the F-35 had a little bit of bad press. I always say, you know, we're really thinking about like the next generation fight, yeah. near peer threats. And the A-10 is great. Don't get me wrong, big gun, it's great. But I think it's there are some things this can do that we need it to do. So, yeah. what would those takeaways be? Um, I mean, the amount of SA and battle space awareness that we can have in this, because of the amount of emissions that it sucks in and shows you on your display is game changing. Like that's, yeah. that is our advantage. Um, we've got like a one foot by two foot touch screen in the airplane and the amount of info, that, like you talked about it, young lieutenants coming in and flying the airplane, that is the hardest thing to, to teach them yeah. because there is so much info and there are so many decisions to make by processing all of that. Um, so it, us with the Raptor next door on night one is like, that's why we win the fight. It's, it's, a, it's a slaying, yeah, slaying yeah. machine. I will, you did hear on like sharing the info. And I know the Raptor's like working on it, but the when I flew with F-35s doing exercises, I was so much more lethal because of the information that the F-35 was sharing. It was yeah. having big brother or big sister there like watching yeah. and kind of guiding the fight, which is a complete game changer. So Absolutely. it's really cool. Definitely. Awesome. Bayo, I know you gotta get ready to fly. Just lots of awesome jet noise around and above. Yeah. So thanks for taking the time. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah.